Jean-Luc Soule, uh, our uh, next uh, speaker, and uh, he has also a tremendous experience in teaching science po, both geopolitics and uh, cultural aspects, and uh, since 2004, uh, uh, she has a, he has a company, Messina, uh, where uh, he's uh, uh, sponsoring uh, different uh, uh, projects. And uh, also, uh, it's very important uh, that uh, he set up 41 years ago uh, a fantastic festival, uh, Perigord Nord, uh, and that will be the 41st uh, edition uh, where Austria is the guest uh, with the world of mu Vienna, the, Austria, the world of music. So uh, I also would like to outline that uh, if you want to test your Hungarian uh, with him, you can do it <laughs> because uh, he spent uh, between 94 and 98 here in Hungary as the director of the French Institute. And I was happy to obtain the book which uh, he did uh, with an artist. The photographer is also the artist, but I read over the weekend and the text is also very professional. So that is really the responsibility how to communicate uh, uh, culture. And uh, I'm a Hungarian, and there was a lot of news, and it was really a nice uh, adventure to read the book and uh, go through the photographs. So uh, I was also mentioning that we are not focusing only on, uh, uh, on, on, on Europe uh, this time. So he recently uh, started a project with uh, Turkish co-founders how to uh, regain somehow uh, uh, the cultural heritage in Aleppo, Syria. We have a maze with us. And uh, the aspiration is, uh, well, it's not easy now with the earthquake, uh, uh, in, in, uh, but, uh, but uh, the aspiration is to train local experts and uh, give over as much expertise as possible uh, to save something uh, uh, after those uh, big distractions. Thank you very much. The floor is yours. Well, hi, everybody. It's really a pleasure to be back in Hungary, not 30 years later, because I have also, I had, I sold it a vineyard in the northeast of Hungary, uh, in Tokai region, for those who, who know uh, this region. It's very close to Ukraine. Uh, I'm not going to talk about Ukrainian and Russia war for wines, but it's also uh, something which might be considered. With the presentation that Aniko gave you, 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 you may uh, just wonder who is that guy, you know, he's done so different things, is there any guidelines in, in his life? Uh, I could also mention I was uh, posted in, in Italy, in Rome, in the Villa Medici for five years. So I think the main important uh, guideline in my life is to um, feel concerned with national heritage and to see how it could be um, some interesting concept and interesting concrete value in the uh, contemporary life. And we'll see that uh, national heritage is something which could be considered under the, the, the aspect of uh, soft power, but also from a point of view of a conflictual power. And, uh, it's uh, to you to decide whether uh, we, we, we prefer to consider the, the peace and soft power or the war and, and conflictual power or some position between peace and war, which is often the case. So I would start with a, a famous uh, French essayist, uh, Raymond Aron. Uh, some of you may, may know because... He, he, he was a, a, a prominent figure in the intellectual life in, in, uh, in the world, in France, but in the world too. Um, in uh, the 60s, he wrote a famous essay, uh, Peace and War Between the Nations. And you could see uh, 
for him, it was quite an important uh, debate just to consider uh, how uh, the, the, the national interest uh, would be factor for peace or for, or for war. And in fact, he, he took uh, in consideration um, the, the, this sentence, an international system can be described as the one whose internal coherence is based on competition. So he puts in mind of his lectures this very sentence, and he gives some light on this confrontation between different objectives. The national interest, a main objective set with political unit based on a territory, population, language, and a specific history. Second objective, uh, the fight against economic dissatisfaction. We, we, we of course, know that um, principal cause for migration is now uh, economic factors. So it's really important to see how uh, this economic dissatisfaction could be a cause of different conflicts. And the third one, which is the pursuit of an ideal uh, or if a set of values such as the world safe for democracy or of an, an uh, ideology, in the case for USSR, for example, or even religion, and we have all in mind the theocracy in Saudi Arabia or to some extent in Iran. Uh, so among these factors, we, we, we have to choose, considering the, the, our subject, that the pursuit of an ideal of uh, and the quest for values uh, is what brings us together here in Vesprem. Vesprem, a city still marked by the scars of a thousand year old history uh, that was consecutively Magyar, Mongolian, uh, Ottoman, Habsburg, and finally Hungarian today. And maybe the list is not yet finished. I, I, we don't know history. I hope now Magyar uh, identity is uh, really well put on the, on, on, the, on the scene. Well, this charming city of uh, Transdanubia uh, had uh, been rebuilt around the, the, the Catholic uh, counter-reform. So it means it's rather a city from the 18th century. Uh, but also the Hungarian modernity could be seen in, in a few buildings and I, I would suggest to see around. Since the, the 90s, uh, a very uh, active policy of restoration has offered the city its current attractive appearance. A modesty blending it's refining uh, ancient faith with a sparkling contemporary dynamism. And today, uh, this year of 2023, uh, it was given the recognition uh, as a capital, cultural capital in Europe, which clearly underlines uh, this long and famous history. And uh, Vesprem is also striking that uh, by its uh, buildings, but also what is quite important, and when we go, uh, went through with train two days ago, we realized with the uh, Bakoin Mountains are a clear and, and quite interesting um, green forest uh, protect. But we see also that the climate, climate has a very strong influence on, on trees, as we see. So most of them are down on, on the ground. So it means uh, even if a city like Vesprem is done both by the balance between uh, the, the, the buildings and the climate, that to have to consider how to, 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 to struggle against the, 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 this problem with, with trees. But it's another story. Uh, maybe we consider it uh, later. Um, so, considering the, the, the word of soft power, uh, I think we couldn't give a better example for Europe as the um, culture of, uh, the, well, the, 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 the official title is European Capital of Culture, um, and the EU and member states mobilize the strength of the European heritage to exercise the power of influence, a form of moral magisterium of an international scale in conjunction with UNESCO, as this conference reminds us today. 
the pro protection and the pro promotion of the main urban settings of historical uh, interest show that the UE, in spite of the sometimes conflicting vision due to the existence of different national interests, is able to foster an approach, if not uh, of European identity, a vision which still remains idealistic, which encourages a fruitful dialogue between various national histories and communities, all sharing the same tragic human paths followed by a similar area of cultural resource. As you know, the, the European Union um, has uh, progressively taken on the task of endorsing and complementing, complementing the action carried out by the member states to preserve and support European cultural heritage. For this very reason, the European Commission has developed various significant political strategies uh, and programs. However, the, the way... Uh, um, uh, Sorry for that. Uh, I think um, yes, uh, not not maybe the proper one. Oops, sorry for that. Yes, that's it. Um, this way of considering national and cultural heritage as a pivotal element of influence is not specific to the European continent. The war of Ukraine, while painfully raising the question of the production of culture, production of culture and heritage in conflict area, is also show, showing us that international organizations such as UNESCO, ALIF, based in, in Geneva, or the Agakan Trust for Culture in the Middle East, know how to mobilize states to overcome or even heal the wounds opened by history or climate. I could give you, even if it's for most of you uh, an old example, but still uh, present in mind, which was the rescue of Egyptian temple of Abu Simbel. Uh, following the creation of the As uh, Aswan Dam, as the, uh, the Egypt at this period in the 60s was already uh, has to, to consider uh, terrible droughts, they uh, took in consideration the fact to, 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 to build a very, built, uh, very big uh, dam uh, that created the, the Nasser Lake. And uh, the UNESCO uh, started a, a real campaign to, 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 to protect and to put uh, 30 meters high uh, this temple of uh, Abu Simbel. And it's, it's really an incredible uh, project which has been done during the 20 years. And today there is another subject, which is the reconstruction of the uh, um, city of Mosul, of Iraq. As you know, it has been destroyed by the... Uh, the, the, the Islamic uh, State and uh, also by the, the terrible fights that uh, the, the, the uh, uh, Islamic State had against uh, the Kurdish people, the Peshmerga, uh, sustained, supported by the, the international uh, coalition. And it's clear now, uh, has been there once, uh, to, that the, the, the new uh, way of uh, reconstructing uh, reconstructing a structure, a city like uh, Mosul, it's a challenging uh, program for the, the whole country of, uh, of Iraq. Um, and we are uh, in this period we're working uh, in raising some funds. As you know, the city of Aleppo in the northwest of Turkey has been terribly damaged by the, the war which started in 2011, from 2011 to, to 2017, even, even if it's not yet finished. And Aleppo was again uh, very difficultly and very painfully hurted by the, uh, the recent earthquake. So we, we are now with a friend of mine who is a, a Turkish uh, lawyer, a big influence in, in Istanbul. We are raising some, uh, raising some, some money to uh, start the research and to train before uh, some uh, Syrian uh, experts or Syrian uh, specialists, uh, and they have to to um, be trained for, for have a, maybe a better know-how to, to know how to deal with um, national heritage. But as you know, uh, Aleppo is not an easy city, city to, to work in, but we are, we are managing this, uh, this fact and we are uh, working uh, on that. 
And the, the destruction of uh, historical heritage has always been the tragic legacy of the eruption of new conquerors. Uh, reconstruction represents, on the contrary, the desire to live together through common value, which can give birth to uh, or enhance a specific heritage with a religious or a civic dimension, and boasting of a mixture above this element. The soft powers of Middle East country is related to former powerful empires quite often, and I would just give a few examples. Iran and Persia, Turkey and, and Ottoman Empire, Saudi, Saudi Arabia and the Wahhabism in the, the, during the 18th century. So these are still uh, very present in the memories and the heritage uh, in different forms for, from, from this uh, great empire and still are in the heart of the, 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 these new or relatively new countries. Um, can we today, uh, can we say today that we are living at a time which appears to uh, be even more unstable than those experienced by our ancestors, ancestors during the 20th century, marked by dreadfully devastating uh, conflicts. Europeans are certainly trying to cope today with a terrible conflict. It broke out on our doorstep, and it clearly shows to be precariousness of our common construction as well as common values within the EU. In fact, a real soft power born and developed under the, the American Soviet condominium based on the balance of nuclear terror, terror a time which represented the horizon of our generation. Uh, I am born the, the, the year of uh, the, the Treaty of Rome signature in uh, 1957, and my father was a member of the, the, the state, the French state delegation, who, who was in, in Sicily to, to, to sign the, the, the agreement of Messine in, in 55. So uh, our generation uh, fall, f f f felt very concerned with, with edification of, uh, of, uh, of Europe. And uh, to start with what we call an ECS uh, member state, you, you know, who was concerned with uh, steel and coal for six countries who, who started their, their reconstruction after the wars. On the other hand, the member states of what we then called Eastern Europe had experienced a depressing, even if some, somehow reassuring, uh, period under the Soviet rule the fall of the wall and the final collapse of the former USSR unleashed the ideals of all those who, before December 1991, belonged to an immense confederation whose primary objective during more than 70 years was to fight against national culture and to destroy the national heritage, considered to be a direct, direct threat to the higher interests of the Soviet superpower here of an imperial Russia. So it's, uh, as Daniela explained us, it's still uh, very accurate in the present conflicts in, in, in Ukraine. We, we, we can uh, thus explain the wars in the uh, former Yugoslavia. Uh, some of uh, you are from the, the different states uh, um, where uh, Rassenbild inside the former Yugoslavia and from the Bosnian conflicts to the one still threatening Kosovo. Since then, states based on a strong national identity have coexisted. The internal glue may be the territorial claims linked to the existence of linguistic minorities in, um, of a nationalist ideal with a strong nostalgic dimension, often expressed by the disrupting form of uh, greater Serbia, greater Albania, or even greater Bulgaria. Uh, at the expense of the neighboring nations of people. And we might say the same of the instrumental use of potentially conflicting religious values. Serbian orthodoxy as a pivotal component of a country's identity, Bosnia or Kosovo representing a historic Muslim specificity within Europe. I am thinking about, for example, a, a, a recent visit where, that we, we had in Kosovo with my, my friend Klaus to, to visit the, some of the Orthodox monasteries. And you may know that in the Chani, where, which is uh, maybe the, the most beautiful uh, Orthodox uh, Serbian monastery, 
it is still protected by the, the NATO forces, the K4 uh, unit uh, with Italians, uh, Carabinieri, I think, when we were there. And uh, in this peaceful, apparently very beautiful landscape, you have this monastery who is still uh, at stake uh, within the relationship between Serbia and, and Kosovo. And it's still a very difficult and painful um, situation. The uh, Serbian Orthodox and the Albanian Muslim heritage uh, suffered, as you know, from the 1908-99 war and from its aftermath. One of the main reasons explaining the rejection, the rejection of Kosovo's application for the UNESCO membership in, in 2015 was the destruction of several Serbian religious heritage sites by an Albanian-speaking country. I'm not distributing, of course, the, 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 uh, uh, the fault of uh, one nation or one uh, community to, to each other, but it's uh, a debate, and we, we make on the spot the, the, the real uh, constant of what was happening or still happening. And we, we could also evoke the, the story of the old bridge, Stari Mosht, in Moshtar, uh, built during the reign of Sultan Suleiman, and completed in uh, 1566 under the direction of the, the British architect and famous one, uh, Sinan. It was only after its destruction in 1909 that its emblematic role in bridging differences and unity conflicts, rivers, banks, and community was fully understood. Since then, its destruction and reconstruction represent the most frequently mentioned example of a monument whose perception has been transformed by the historical and social concept. Um, I would now want to, to give you a, a few um, examples of what happened uh, all around the, the world, especially in, in, in uh, China, um, where... Um, Sorry for that. Uh, okay, um, not here. Um, some ancient nations in, in Asia also are considering their national heritage uh, in a, as having a prominent role to, to put their um, name or their ancient uh, heritage uh, on the top. Of, of the world uh, competitions for, for soft power. And I can give you the example of China. As you know, in China, you have two, uh, two words for even the name of the country. The first one is uh, uh, Zhonghuo, which means the, the country of the middle, middle of this part of uh, uh, the world, or even in the middle of the world, and the other word is uh, the Zhong, Zhonghua notion, which means a civilization, uh, center of civilization in relation with an old past of more than 5,000 years. So um, it's uh, something quite uh, strange when you are invited, uh, which was the case 10 years ago, uh, by the director of uh, the Museum of uh, the man of Beijing. As you know, in Zhukujian, 20 kilometers from uh, Beijing, you have a, a site which has been um, excavated for uh, now for, for one century. And the Chinese people or the Chinese archaeologists uh, are working on the idea that uh, a new man was invented here in that part of China uh, during the period between the, the Neanderthal man, I don't know if you are familiar with prehistoric uh, notions, but uh, till 300,000 years ago, the Neanderthal man was um, powerful all around the world, but they emerged from Africa, the Homo sapiens. Uh, we are Homo sapiens, as you know, but it was 300,000 ago. And in this place of uh, uh, China, mm -hmm. close to Beijing, they think they could find um, a man who, who, de who was developing by himself from the Neanderthal uh, position to the Homo sapiens today. So uh, um, an Homo sinensis who would prove that China started 
as a, a real nation and a man of influence, so we could say, um, 100,000 uh, years ago. So it's still a, a debate and how uh, could the uh, uh, old man civilization, civilization could, could today be, be a factor for China to be on, on the, the, the top of uh, uh, civilizations. Um, the, the, the destructions of um, some, uh, some other places I'm going to, to talk about in India uh, later, but uh, I would add there is a quite interesting point also uh, about um, geographical maps. Uh, in 2014, uh, in traditional uh, exchange of uh, presents in, in Berlin between um, um, Angela Merkel and Xi Jinping, um, a map from a geograph, uh, German geograph from 1740 was given to Xi Jinping. But on this map, uh, you couldn't see uh, Tibet, Xinjiang, uh, and uh, Mongolian part. So, of course, it was quite difficult. And Taiwan was from a different color from the mainland uh, China. So, of course, it was a big scandal in China when, when Xi Jinping showed the, the maps to the journalists and they substituted uh, a map done later, one century later, with all of this region incorporated to China. So, it means that in that case, the, the soft power is based on, on geography and the way it is, uh, it is very well uh, presented on, on the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, on the map. Another good example of how uh, national heritage could be uh, a factor of conflict is uh, what the, the, the BGP, uh, yeah, who is now in, in power, uh, has done a, a, a big, uh, big affair, a big scandal with uh, a, a mosque. A mosque which was uh, raised um, in the, the uh, years to 2010, uh, the, the mosque which was built probably during the Mughal Empire and during the, the Emperor Babu was, was in power. But the problem is uh, the, the specialists of architecture and uh, old um, civilization, Mughal civilization, uh, discuss about how this uh, temple this mosque was uh, done with a former Hindu temple. So a lot of debates occurred of that, uh, riots uh, with a lot of people killed in this riot, just on the fact that the, the Hindu uh, claim this was uh, an Hindu temple before 16th century. They, they uh, <laughs> told the, the people that some columns in the mosque were from the, the ancient Hindu temple. It was not clear enough. But pro progressively, with this conflict around uh, a temple, the Ahodhya temple, Ayodhya temple, uh, brings light on the fact the, the Hindu influence was more and more uh, efficient and uh, growing in the, in the India at the time, based especially on, on this uh, very, very conflict. So, I, I would now um, give you just a last indication about uh, the way soft power, national heritage, and globalization could, could uh, be considered together. Uh, we can, can we contemplate the possibility that this appropriation of uh, cultural legacies uh, by communities of states uh, in order to build um, or rebuild a national narrative on territorial against or, or religious, uh, linguistic or religious grounds could be um, uh, one day fade by, uh, away under the weight of its progressive globalization or, or, or our culture or national identities? Uh, that's a question. Our way of thinking, behaving, and expressing ourselves uh, are apparently resembling each other more and more because of our growing participation to, to uh, vast world communities, uh, uh, fully aware of the climate change threats and of the tragic consequences of the conflict around the world. Uh, and yet, the national cause often used as an excuse for 
for the sometimes violent preservation of specific interests or, or belief remain central. Let, let me offer you a, a last example. Uh, Afghanistan uh, geographical situation is prominent at the crossroads of uh, uh, Central uh, uh, Asia, uh, Indian uh, subcontinent, and, and China. So, uh, of course, all of the civilizations uh, gave their, their, their monuments and uh, in the former Afghanistan, but the one I visited uh, 20 years ago uh, was um, before Taliban took power in 2001. Um, was quite interesting because you have all these different uh, monuments period uh, from, from the very old time till, till the mosque uh, built up in, in the 18th or 19th century. But uh, when the Taliban took power, they decided to, to, to destroy some Buddhist uh, elements of civilization. You remember this Bamiyan temple with giant, two giants Buddha. Um, they, they made it uh, explode um, just in front of the camera. So it was an international scandal. And when the Taliban back to, uh, were back to power two, two, two years ago, we were um, aware of the difficulties uh, to protect the, the, the global national heritage in, in, in Afghanistan, but they declared they would respect especially uh, the, the, the Kabul National Museum that, that was spilled, a uh, very big pillage in, in uh, 2001. And they did uh, put, uh, maybe to, um, uh, to give a, a good example to the global, uh, the national, international communities, that they, they would protect this museum, this museum that was destroyed. So uh, again, the, the, the power and the soft power that such a country could uh, show to the world is based on the respect of a very uh, old uh, monuments uh, from different civilizations. As a conclusion, as a conclusion, soft power or conflictful power? Um, how could we consider uh, the conflicting vision of uh, to be reconciled with uh, that time when global information networks as an echo chamber of identity concerns of each people, when attacks and heritage are often considered an insult to a sometimes mythologized history and or an intolerable aggression against what constitutes the very essence of a community as well as, uh, as a nation? Moreover, the soft power based on the accumulation of cultural heritage through significant global museum networks is today somehow viewed as the abusive control of major heritage uh, assets uh, collected by imperial nations, uh, nations in the 19th century or even during the beginning of the former century. Sorry. And uh, uh, the conclusion of that is, uh, do we have to uh, give back um, most of these objects, artifacts, which have been accumulated in museums to, to the, 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 the former countries? It, it's a real debate. Uh, how could be well protected uh, when the climate, especially in Sahel region, is, is uh, doing the things much more complicated? And the, the, the last... Um, uh, concept that we made down is the sources of conflict, um, conflicts will remain and cultural heritage throughout the world will continue to represent the unmoving and intangible witness of many multifaceted political change. This is one of the precious messages uh, conceived by the novelist, you know him, Ivo Andrich, uh, in his magnificent novel, uh, the story of the bridge over the Drina. You have to read this book if it's not yet done, and you could consider how the, the national heritage uh, follows through uh, centuries and the different culture, the way they, they decide to appropriate or to restore it. Thank you very much. <laughs>